Good morning. I'm Rachel McCarty from Duran Church of the Nazarene with another lesson from our book that we've been studying. 13 Very Bad Days and How God Fixed Them. Each day that we've been working together, we've also been figuring out how Alexander is going to do in his life because Alexander had a terrible, horrible, very bad, no good day. Let me read to you what happens to him today. In the carpool, Mrs. Gibson let Becky have a seat by the window. Audrey and Elliot got seats by the window too. I said I was being scrunched. I said I was being smushed. I said, if I don't get a seat by the window, I'm going to be car sick. No one even answered. I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. You can see his picture there. And this is what's troubling him about his life. He's had a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Well, I brought a friend to introduce to you today. This is Mr. Lion. He is not mine. He belongs to my daughter, Miss Deb McCarty, but she let me borrow him. Now this lion looks pretty tame and he's pretty snuggly too. Um, actually, I've seen real lions myself a couple different times in my life. Of course I've seen lions in the zoo. Maybe you have too. And then I've also seen lions, what we say, in the wild. I was able to go to South Africa and I went on a safari drive through a natural habitat area where wild animals lived. And I saw real lions. But the only problem with those real lions that I saw, they were sleeping. It was the middle of the day and it was hot and they don't, they don't even hunt during the daytime. So they were taking a big nap. So I saw them from a distance but I didn't see much of their powerfulness or their scariness, so I wasn't afraid at all. Well, our story today is about lions, and I think that you know who I'm going to be talking about. You know, the children in, of the Israelite children were taken captive, and they were taken to a foreign land. But some of those children were very, very good Israelites and they followed the laws of God. One time when Daniel and his friends were trying to be get, uh, get to be a part of the kingdom at that point, they told their ruler, we only want to eat vegetables and good things. We don't want to eat the food from the king's table. And they became healthier and wiser and more wonderful. And they were given places of leadership. Daniel's friends were tested one time when Daniel was away and they were thrown into the fiery furnace. They came out with God's protection and there wasn't even a smell of smoke on their clothes. But as time went on, Daniel became a very high ruler. In fact, he was in charge of all the other people who were in charge of the different provinces. Provinces are kind of like states. So Daniel was in charge of all of it. And he was a very righteous man. He made sure that he prayed three times a day. He would go upstairs in the upper floor of his house and he would kneel down by an open window. Now that open window faced in the direction of the city of Jerusalem because the city of Jerusalem is where the temple used to be before it got crashed down and destroyed by their enemies. But he would still face Jerusalem and he would pray to his God three times a day. That was a very good habit to have because praying is very important to us. It's the way that we talk to God and the, one of the ways that God talks to us. So this went on for some time. But, you know, sometimes when you're doing the right thing, other people get jealous and they don't like it. Well, that's what happened. Some of the other officials got jealous of Joseph. Sorry, jealous of Daniel. And they did not like what he was doing. 
So they fixed up a scheme, that means a plan, to hurt him and destroy him. They went to the king of that time and they said, Oh, King Darius, live forever. You know how powerful you are. You can make any law that you want to and everybody has to obey it. And you should be the one that grants everybody's wishes and everybody's desires. Nobody else should do that because you're the most powerful. And Darius was feeling all proud of himself because, well, that was true. He was the most powerful and he was the most wise. So the men, the officials tricked him and said, Oh, King Darius, make a rule of the Medes and the Persians that for 30 days, no one should ask or beg or pray for any other favors or wishes from anybody except you. And Darius thought, that's a good idea. I think I'll sign that. And he signed it and he put his seal, he wears a ring that has a certain symbol on it and he put wax on the paper and put his seal on that law so that no one could change it. Well, Darius was feeling pretty proud of himself. Nobody was gonna pray or ask or wish for anything except to him for 30 days. But the officials went right out and they started following Daniel and they started looking for him. And when it became evening prayers and morning prayers, they went and checked on him. There he was sitting at his window with his head bowed, his hands closed, and he just prayed as he faced Jerusalem. And the officials like, yay, we've got him now, we've got him now. He's not asking from King Darius, he is asking from his God. <laughs> and they went back to King Darius and they told him, there is someone who is asking something from somebody else besides you, O king. And King Darius said, who is that? And the officials said, it's Daniel, your servant. Oh my goodness. That wiped the smile right off of King Darius's face because Daniel was one of his favorites. And so he thought all day long, like, how in the world am I going to get him out of this? And he tried to think of something he could do or a new, some new law that he could make so that he wouldn't have to put Daniel in the lion's den. That was the punishment for disobeying that law. He couldn't think of anything. So the men came to the king again and said, you king know that your laws cannot be changed. You must put Daniel in the lion's den for disobeying this law. So the king said, all right, okay. He gave the orders for Daniel to be arrested and to be thrown in the den of lions. But the king said something to him, and I'm gonna read it right here from Daniel 6. This is what the king said to his servant, Daniel. May your God, whom you serve so faithfully, rescue you. Oh my goodness. The king knew that Daniel worshiped God. Daniel had been a Christian and a believer and a righteous man before Darius until Darius knew that he was a believer in God. So a stone was placed over the hole and Daniel was left in there all night long. And I tell you what, that king, he didn't sleep a wink. He didn't eat a thing, he didn't drink a thing. He didn't do anything except worry and wring his hands. And the next morning, very early, he went to it and he moved the rock from the opening and he yelled down. Now this takes true faith for him to yell down and say, Daniel, servant of the living God. This is from verse 20 in chapter six. Was your God whom you serve so faithfully able to rescue you from the lions? And Daniel answered, Long live the king. My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so that they would not hurt me. And I have been found innocent in his sight. And I have not wronged you, your majesty. 
the king was so overjoyed that he pulled Daniel up out of that pit and he made a proclamation. And this is exactly what he said. He said this to all the people of his kingdom. I'm going to read it to you right from the Bible. I love it so much. This is what he said. I decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed and his rule will never end. He rescues and saves his people. He performs miraculous signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. King Darius said that to everybody. He witnessed about the true one God to everybody in his whole kingdom. Wow, do I love that. One man stood up for God and trusted God. He wasn't shaking in his boots going in that lion den. He said, my God will take care of me. And that's exactly our point for today. God wants us to trust him. He wants us to trust him. Even when bad things come and things we don't understand come and we have very terrible bad days. But we can trust God. We can trust God because he loves us so much. That is the wonderful thing about Daniel. And Daniel's very bad day was turned into a good day because God helped him. Daniel trusted God and God came through for him. We have learned so many Bible points. God's word, God wants us to obey him and God is in control. God has a plan for us and now God wants us to trust him. Every single time we have a very bad, horrible, no good day, we can turn to God because we can trust him. He is a good God. And a lot of things that we don't understand. Oh yes, that reminds me. There are things we don't understand. And that is our verse for today. From Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Trust the Lord. That's what we have to do. If we trust the Lord, he will make our paths straight. Don't trust our own understanding because we don't understand. Did Daniel understand about having to be thrown into the lion's den? No. He thought it was a weird law, a silly law, and he knew it was a law just to get him killed. But he trusted God. It is such a wonderful thing that we have a God that we can trust. Let's trust him more every day and thank him for what he's doing in our life. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this day so thankful that you are with us always. And we don't want to trust to our own understanding because we don't understand much. But what we hold firm to is that you are a good God. And we can trust you. God is so good. He's so good to me. Dear Lord, please just be with us each day. And may we learn to trust you more, no matter what our day is like. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Make sure that when you're together, that you have a chance to listen to that song that I mentioned a few times back ago, the song that's called, I believe it's called um, Adonai, and that is a song that your parents can look up for you so that you can learn to sing that together. Well, do we have surprises for you in your packet this week? You, of course, will find your Bible verse for your family, and then you will find a coloring page that Miss Deb has colored so beautifully for me. This is the picture of Daniel in the lion's den. And you see what Daniel's doing? Sleeping. 
That is how much he trusted God. He just went to sleep. For your craft this time, you will be making a magnet. I'm going to show you the back. This is the back where you put the magnet, but that goes on last. Inside your packet, you will find a letter on exactly how to make this, what steps to take each time, and how this will be turning into a cute little lion that you can put on your refrigerator. Every time you look at it, you know, I must trust God, just like Daniel did. So yours won't look like this, because this is the finished one. Yours will come in a pack like this, and you've got all of the things in there that you need. Some things you might have to little, use some glue for, and you'll have to use some scissors, but other than that, everything is there for you. Your treat this week is a fruit snack, because Daniel ate very, very healthy food. Miss Deborah McCarty found one more thing that she wanted you to have as an extra activity for the week. And that is this beautiful picture of a lion. This is what we call adult coloring. So if you like it, you can enjoy it. If you don't like this kind of careful coloring, maybe your mom or grandma would like it. But this is a beautiful picture of a lion. You can see Miss Deb's not quite done. But she's done a lot of it, and she is going to keep this for a long time because it's going to be so beautiful. The other thing that I want to tell you is that we decided that we would give you a 4th of July packet. So I'm not going to explain the things in it. You can work on those for two weeks until 4th of July. As you finish a page, color it very nicely and put it up as a 4th of July decoration in your house. We're thankful for the country, the United States of America, and we're thankful for our flag and for 4th of July when we have our Independence Day. So just have some fun this week. We've given you lots of activities to do with your family. And remember that even if it does happen to be like it's going to look like a bad day, God can help you in the many ways that we have studied. This week, remember, God wants us to trust him. You're a great group of friends. Have fun, and I'll see you next week. Bye.